All right, it's good to be in the Lord's house. Good to see everyone's back with us again tonight. Uh, if you was here, if you wasn't here this morning, you 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 missed a message. I'm telling you, Amen. you missed an anointed message. You don't hear preaching like that uh, in this day and time. And uh, looking forward to another good service tonight. If you're visiting with us, you're our honored guest. And as always, we always welcome those that tune in by live stream. We appreciate that so much. Let's stand up, take the church hymnal. Turn to page number 382, 382 at the bottom of the page. I would not be denied. like to welcome you to Temple this evening. If you're here first time, we'd like to raise your hand. We'll give you a card. And unless you fill it out, drop the plate and we'll pass this in a moment. Anyone with us first time tonight? Hand back here. Yes, sir. Good to have you folks. Where are you all from? Good to have you. Good to have you. Amen. Make yourself right at home. All right. Okay, hey, brother.
Let's stand up, fellowship, shake hands with our visitors as the choir comes down. Such beautiful singing. Amen, amen. If you like good music, beautiful music, you just heard it. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. We'll have the ushers come up here. We'll take up the evening offering. Do you all remember Gloria Howe and Dixie uh, Hall and uh, also Ruby Keith? And is there anyone else in the hospital that I'm not aware of? Well, remember these ladies in prayer tonight. Please lift them up. I still believe, folks, and I will until I leave this world. God heals. Amen. Amen. He heals. All right, Brother Johnny Jones, lead us in prayer, please. Lord, so thankful to be in your house again. Lord, pray for the man of God that stands up and breaks the bed of life. Lord, pray you ignore him from the farmhouse. Lord, pray for those that are in the hospitals right now, Lord, that can't be with us. Lord, pray that you comfort them. Melanick and Shelley Lee are going to be singing for us tonight. Does Jesus care when my heart is pain? Too deep for mirth or song 
As the burdens press and cares distress, the ways grow weary and long. Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when my way is dark with a name less dread and fear? As the daylight fades into deep bright shades, does he care enough to be near? Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long night dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care? When I've tried and failed to resist some taste and strong, when for my deep grief I find no ease, the tears fall all night long. Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares, his heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth, to me and my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks? Is all to him does he see? Oh, yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. ladies came up and told me that I was nominated to sing tonight so <laughs> this song has been on my heart um, the past few weeks with all the storms and watching people just lose everything tangible that they have and no matter what we go through whether our storms are physical or spiritual the Lord's always with us Of tribulation. 
salvation stand by me in the midst of tribulation stand by me when the host of hell assail and my strength begins to fail thou who never lost a battle stand by me in the midst of faults and failures stand by me in the midst of faults and failures stand by me when I do the best I can and my friends Stand by me in the midst of persecution. Stand by me when my foes in battle array undertake to stop my way. Thou who say, Paul and Silas, stand by me. Stand by me when I'm growing old and feeble. Stand by me when my life becomes a burden and I'm nearing chilly Jordan. Oh, thou lily of the valley, stand. Brother Shu, you know what you got there, don't you? <laughs> All right, brother, you got a jewel. Come on up here and preach to us tonight. Amen. This is a preacher, folks. Amen. God bless you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you for you. If you're glad you're saved tonight, say amen. amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter number 17. I was going to ask you if you enjoyed that singing, say amen, but I didn't want to set you up like that. Um, I love good singing, but I'm, she's my favorite. Hallelujah. Uh, that's an answer to prayer. Sweetheart, you did a great job, and I appreciate the opportunity. It is our honor to be here. I love your pastor. I love this church. You've been very gracious to me over the years, and so I appreciate your pastor and first lady being so kind again uh, to my wife and I and the good time of fellowship today. It is certainly our honor to be here, and uh, thank you for what you do. Thank you for supporting your pastor and everything that goes into the ministry and the outreach of this church. Thank you so much for that. America needs it, and uh, your pastor is one of the greatest men of God in America. And uh, I say that without hesitation and without reservation, and uh, he is one of God's choicest men, not because he's standing in front of me, not because he asked me to come, and he did not ask me to say that. Amen. I'm not trying to flatter him. Uh, but it is the truth. It's hard to find good Bible preaching in this day without compromise. There's a lot of politics that goes into preaching. And I love Bible preaching that is has got rid of politics. And I love that. Thank the Lord for it. Let's look together. Exodus chapter 17. Let's begin reading in verse 14. Exodus 17 verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book. 
and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisai. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. I don't have a detailed outline tonight, and I've learned a long time ago, I'd rather be in line than have an outline. But I want to share my heart with you tonight, and I want to preach on this thought, sharing the supernatural. Sharing the supernatural. Father, we need your help tonight. Thank you for what you accomplished this morning, that, but that will not suffice this evening. Thank you for your touch and your anointing in the service already. I pray, God, that you'd help us to glorify you, honor your word, and Lord, we'll give you the praise now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Of course, when we come to Exodus chapter number 17, this is the first battle that the Israelites encountered after exiting the land of Egypt. Exodus 17 records the battle that the Israelites encountered with Amalek. As students of the Bible, you're aware that Amalek is probably the greatest type of the flesh found in the Old Testament. The typology is painted beautifully before us in this particular chapter that the first battle that the people of God encountered after their exodus, after salvation, after deliverance was Amalek, their flesh. The first battle that a new spiritually born convert will encounter as a spiritual infant is with their flesh. But furthermore, the first battle that every one of us that's saved by the grace of God will encounter on a daily basis is, guess what, with our flesh, right? And when you look at this chapter, it is absolutely amazing. It is a miracle, no doubt indeed. How God took a bunch of ragtag soldiers being in bondage for over 400 years, didn't have a lot of military training, probably didn't have a lot of the state of art um, armor and things of that nature as maybe uh, Amalek and his folks had. But nevertheless, God worked a supernatural miracle right before them. Cannot stress the importance of that enough that God made the impossible possible right before their very eyes. Eyes. God gave them the battle. God gave them the victory. And as we walk our way into our text in verse 15, or 14, 15, and 16, we find that after God had worked a miracle and, and did a supernatural work right before their very eyes, verse 14, God instructs Moses to record these events for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Verse 15, God instructs Moses to build an altar, and there they, they called it Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our batter. My, what preaching is in that in itself? And in verse 16, God gave the instruction that from this time forward, every generation that was to follow would encounter the same battle that Moses and Joshua did on that day. But where my burden lies tonight, where my heart lies tonight is in verse 14. That after God did a great work right before their very eyes, God instructs Moses to write these events down for a memorial. Write it down in a book. And not only write these events down in a book, but rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. If you're taking notes, I encourage you to circle or underline the term rehearse there in your Bible. It is the Hebrew word sum, sum. It is defined as to set, to direct toward. Even though the Hebrew word sum is only translated two times in our English Bible into the word rehearse, the word sum itself is found 585 times in the Old Testament. It is translated in other places as the word put, as the word make, as the word set, as the word place. When God instructed Moses to write these events down in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, it was more than just repeat it in his ears, but it was to place this story. 
It was to put it in his ears over and over and over again. Remind the Joshua, remind the Joshua what God has done on this day. Put this story, put this miracle in the ears of Joshua. Put it in his ears on purpose and repeat it over and over and over again. Now, why would God want Moses to do that? Moses was sooner than later going to pass off the scene, right? Joshua was to be the man that would lead the nation of Israel across Jordan. He was the one that was to be a conqueror. Joshua needed to be reminded of the supernatural acts of God so he in return could testify to another generation what God did in the past. God instructed Moses to record it and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua because for every generation that was to come, God wanted them to know that he was the Almighty and he had all power. It is evident in verse 16 that every generation that was to come would fight against the descendants of Amalek. Guess what? They're still fighting their descendants to this very day, right? But when we look in this text, uh, God is saying every generation that is to come is going to have their bout and their battle uh, with their Amalek. And when that time comes, uh, they need to be reminded uh, that there is a God in heaven who has all power. And if God did it for Moses, uh, if God did it for Joshua, God can do it for me. If God did the supernatural then, uh, God can do the supernatural supernatural now and there is power when God's people share the supernatural when we testify of what God has done how God is so faithful how God is so trustworthy how that God has showed up and showed out time and time and time again and the next generation of Christendom needs to know uh, the supernatural acts of an almighty God. And it's a shame to say it, but it is true that in most of our Baptist churches across the land, we have almost chalked up the supernatural to something that is taboo. To mention words of the Holy Ghost or supernatural or miracles or even to mention the word the healing. It is almost a taboo language. And therefore, the result of that is our Bible colleges, and not trying to be critical, but I'm just going to preach a little bit if that's all right. Our Bible colleges are filled with people that's learning about God, but they don't know anything about God. Our pulpits are filled with men that are preaching about a supernatural God, but yet God has never done anything supernatural for them. Singing groups by the thousands are on stages and platforms all across America singing about the miraculous acts of an almighty God, but they don't know anything about the supernatural acts of an almighty God. And there's a generation that when you mention supernatural, when you, when, you, when you mention the power of an almighty God, their mind automatically goes to Pentecostalism, faith healing, those big crusades where people get slapped upside the head and get knocked out of their wheelchairs and they get up dancing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And when you, when you mention supernatural acts, they, they are scared to death of it. But what we have to understand is that if we're going to grow, if we're going to mature, if we're going to be the Christians that God wants us to be, we've got to come to the realization that we're not going to be able to figure it all out. And there's just some situations in our life that we have no control over. And when we pray and we're faithful and God does a mighty work in our life, that's the evidence and the fingerprints of God when we don't understand it. But God makes the impossible possible. That's how God gets the the glory. Amen. And there's power when we share the supernatural. I love reading behind C.S. Lewis and Mr. Lewis, the great Christian apologist of yesteryear, makes the statement concerning the supernatural and Christianum. 
He says, do not attempt to water Christianity down. There must be no pretense that you can have it without the super, can have it with the supernatural left out. So far as I can see, Christianity is precisely the one religion from which the miraculous cannot be separated. You must frankly argue for supernaturalism from the very outset. The Christian story is precisely the story of one grand miracle. The Christian assertion being that what is beyond all space and time, what is uncreated, eternal, came into nature, into human nature, descended into his own universe, and rose again, bringing nature up with him. It is precisely one great miracle. If you take that away, there is nothing specifically Christian left. That I'm not speaking about emotionalism now. You know what I'm speaking about. I'm not speaking about emotionalism. But true Bible Christianity is synonymous with the supernatural. You cannot separate the two. And there's a generation that needs to hear those stories. That it will grow and build their faith. Because when we share the supernatural, it changes the generation to come. Let me, let me testify a little bit, just, just for a few minutes and I, I, I'll be done, just to share what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Probably the greatest spiritual influence in my life as a kid growing up was my mother. And it was more than what she said, it was how she lived that made the biggest impact in my life. But two principles my mama drilled in my head was faith and fear. You trust God, you, you, God is trust, you can trust him with the impossible. Trust God. She put faith in me, but she also put fear in me. That if you act foolish and act crazy, God will chastise you. And that, that's not bad to teach that, by the way. Right. Put faith and fear in me. And it was more than what I watched her struggle. I watched her ups and downs. I watched her daily life. Even though she may not have been aware that I was watching her, I heard her weeping in the bedroom, crying in her daily prayer time. I watched God do miraculous things, and I was a witness to it all. There was one time in particular, I remember one of her friends that she was singing in a singing group with in our local church at the time. She, she didn't have any water. Her well went dry and, and, and they didn't have any water. And so they had a well company up there and they were trying to dig for a well and tried to dig for water and everything was dry and barren, didn't have no water at all. And those ladies began to fast and pray for seven days. And I was just a little bitty kid. And I got off the school bus there on that exit where my mom's friend lives and his little small single wide trailer. And I got off the school bus and I saw my mama and her two friends that had gathered around that hole where they were drilling for that well and they had got on their knees and they were holding hands and they were praying and begging God to give them water. And you, you think I'm crazy, you think I'm lying to you, I promise I'm not exaggerating, God be my witness. As they were praying, you could hear water start gurgling in the bottom of that pipe. When they, when they plumbed the water in, the water was so powerful, it blew those PVC pipes out of that single wide trailer. There was so much water pressure. God did it, and as a little boy, I witnessed it. Another, another time in particular, my, my mom, we was in church and our pastor was up preaching out of the book of James about the prayer of faith. And at that time that I, I had these sores that had came up on my legs, these big red blotches, and our local doctors didn't know, know what they were and they, they began to hurt me and then we started going to specialists and they didn't know what they were. And so long story short, they began to affect my walking and mom was very nervous and she began to pray. And that particular Sunday morning, our pastor got up and began to preach out of James about the prayer of faith. And he was fixing to dismiss the service and my mama got up and she carried me in front of the church and she asked for the, the men of the church to come and the pastor came and they anointed me with oil and we left. And like good Baptists, we ate lunch and we laid down on Sunday evening to take a nap. Everybody said amen there. And I, I was laying there and mama hollered at me and said, get up, it's time to go to church and I'll never forget. I flipped those covers back off my legs to get ready for church and I looked at my legs and those, those red sores were gone. And mama picked me up and, and we got dressed and we ran to the church and she bust into the pastor's office 
And she rolled up my britches legs and she said, Preacher, look, look. When service began that night, the pastor rolled my britches legs up past my knees, set me on the communion table, and everybody in that church made a line around the auditorium and they walked by to witness the supernatural act of God that God did it. And because my mama shared the supernatural with me, I grew up knowing and understanding and believing that God does know, God does care, God does hear, God can do the miraculous in our life. And as I grew into adulthood and God put me in ministry, I don't have time to tell you all the stories of what God has done for me. One, one in particular, just, just a teenage preacher boy and, and, and trying, trying to make it and trying to go to Bible college. And, and I, I, was, I was so poor and I put the last bit of change I had in my little pickup truck and there was a church probably half an hour or 45 minutes from home called me to come preach for them. And I knew, I knew I had enough gas to get there, but I knew I didn't have enough gas to get home. Now, I know that's crazy, but I was, I was just trusting God, right? So I drove to church and I preached that night. I'm thinking maybe, maybe they'll give me a love offering. I don't know. And, and, but they, they, they gave me a check. There was no cash in it. And y'all know there ain't no bank open late at night. And that was before online banking with all that stuff. So I had no money. And I was sitting in my little old Nissan pickup truck and I was the last vehicle in that parking lot. And I knew when I cranked that truck up, I, had a, I, I just had a few miles left on that tank. I knew I didn't have enough to get home. And I said, Lord, I've heard my whole life these stories of these preachers serving you faithfully. I've heard my whole life about that. And Lord, you told me in your word that if, if I would go, you would supply the need. And God, I'm trying to serve you. I have no idea how I'm going to get home, but God, I'm just trusting you. No, I put the key in the ignition and fixing the turn the ignition. And there was an F-250 Power Stroke diesel pulled into that parking lot squalling tires, man. And this guy got out holding a piece of money in there and he's a crying. He said, preacher, I'm so sorry. He said, the Holy Ghost told me to give you this while we was at church. And he said, I agree, God. And he said, I got all the way home and the Lord wouldn't let me get inside the door. And he said, I turned around and came back and here, this is yours. And he handed me a hundred dollar bill. I filled my truck up with gas. I went to McDonald's and got me two combos. Somebody say amen there. And had a little money to live off the rest of the week because God did the supernatural. Uh, There's situations and I didn't have a place to live at a time at home and, and everything worked out that way and, and God found me a little apartment and I was there and I moved in and I didn't, and I'm not, I promise you, I'm not exaggerating, I'm not, I'm not doing this to, to make you emotional, I'm just testifying of the supernatural and I, I, I moved in and, and God knows it's the truth. I had, a, I had a mattress on the floor, that's all I had. I had a lamp with no shade sitting on the floor I had a fold-out camping chair, $7 in my billfold, and a King James Bible. I remember one night laying on that, laying on that mattress on the floor, holding my Bible to my chest, praying myself to sleep. And I said, God, to have any food in the house whatsoever, I said, God, if I starve to death, I'm going to starve to death trusting your word. Got up the next morning and I went off to preach some meetings. I was gone for two weeks. When I came back home, I walked in that little apartment and it was completely furnished. I went to the cabinets and the cabinets was full of food and my refrigerator was full of food. And there was a church down the road from that apartment that I'd preached revival in a couple of years before the preacher was in tune with heaven and God said he needs something and they found my landlord and I was gone on the road. So while I was gone, they went in there and they put a full bedroom suit in there. They gave me a couch and a chair and a table and brought all that food in there. And God did the supernatural right before my very eyes. One more, one more and I promise you I'm done. See that, that pretty, pretty little girl of our playing that piano? That's a miracle from God. Does everybody understand that? If you, if you looked around, the pickings are kind of slim nowadays. Can I get a witness there? 
And I remember from that ripe old age of 11 praying every day of my life for a godly wife. Every day. God called me to preach at 17, serving God faithfully in my 20s, serving God faithfully in my 30s. I got to the place I didn't think God was ever, ever going to give me a wife. And it wasn't just a pretty face to go to church with. I wanted somebody that knew God. I wanted somebody that would roll up their sleeves and serve God with me. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I got to the place I didn't think God was ever going to do it. I said, God, if you don't ever give me a wife, that's okay. I'll serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I was at a, a youth meeting and there was a missionary friend of mine, him and his family, they sang and we talked after the service and you know how everybody is, their noses, they want to poke and prod and find out my single status and all this stuff and it was real annoying. I can say that now, glory to God. And he, he, gave, me, he gave me her contact information. He said, she's, she's a Christian lady. She's a godly lady. And he said, maybe the Lord would work it out. Maybe y'all could go out sometime or something like that. And I prayed about it and just nervous. And, you know, y'all don't know this, but girls our age are crazy. So anyhow, I was, I was real nervous about that. So I, I, I sent her a text message and her response was, I'm sorry, you've got the wrong number. And I knew we started off on the right foot. But we, we talked on the phone for, for six months before we, ever, before we ever met in person. And God began to grow that companionship and that friendship and that relationship through communication. And I knew I, knew I was in big trouble one day when I'd never met her in person, but I got off the phone and I threw my phone against the wall and said, Cody, you're in big trouble because you're falling in love with a woman you've never even met. <laughs> and I showed up at her house and we went to eat pork chops. You remember that, baby? We went to eat pork chops. And I couldn't even eat mine because I kept looking at her because in my mind, how could somebody be so pretty and so godly at the same time? And I've heard my whole life these men say, I couldn't do it without my wife. I didn't understand it then, but now the Lord's let me experience that I could not do it without. We are serving God together. He not only gave me my soulmate and my best friend, He gave me a wife that helps me serve Him faithfully. As I prayed, as I prayed, I don't even know why I prayed this, but I prayed for a piano player that could sing I don't know why I prayed this, but I prayed specifically for a left-handed piano player that could sing. I know that's quirky. I have no idea why I prayed that. But boy, did God give me a good one. And I come just to say this tonight, that whatever your Amalek is, whatever your battle is, whatever you're facing now or whatever you'll face in the future, God's bigger than that. And you can trust Him. But when God does the miraculous in your life, don't fail to share it. Because there's a generation behind you that needs to hear it. You senior saints in here that think, well, I, physically I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't, I can't work, and I can't do this, this that area of, of ministry, whatever the case may be. But there's one thing we can all do is we can share those stories of what God has done for us. And it'll build the faith of the next generation. I say this in, in sincerity and humility. Preacher, I salute you. And I thank you for sharing the supernatural. You'll never know the questions and the things I had in my mind. And I was so hungry for truth and so hungry for the word and you're preaching and you sharing those supernatural stories of what God has done sure has changed me sure has made a difference in this preacher and not exclusively to Pastor Lawson God has men all over the place that's made an impact but I am grateful and I say it publicly I am grateful for God's people that we're not afraid to testify 
of what God has done for them. They didn't care what people thought. They shared the supernatural. And it taught me that God has all power and He can do all things. Don't ever be afraid to share the supernatural. Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for this time together. Lord, You've done great things for us all. Lord, I know if we opened the floor, we'd be here for, for a whole week going around the room of what you've done. But I thank you for this place and the ministry of this church, how it's made an impact in my life. Thank you for answering prayer. Thank you for supplying the need. Thank you for healing. Thank you, Lord, that when we don't understand, we have no idea. When there is no way, I'm grateful that you make a way. Help us, Lord, to record it. Help us to rehearse it often. Put it on purpose in the ears of the next generation that they may know the supernatural acts of the Almighty. Thank you for this time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor. Thank you, brother. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like being transparent and speak spontaneously as it comes to your mind it comes from the from the heart thank you brother amen that's a good thing it's a very good thing yes it is yes it is when god saved me in 1973 i had no mentor i had no one to go to but i had a desire burning in my soul to learn the word of god but it was it was a good 4 years later and then God introduced me to a man who became my mentor. And I learned so much from him. And I thank God for it. And uh, still study some of his material today. That's why he does it. He uses us. If I've ever given anything out, it's because I first received it. And you see that? What do we have that we haven't received of the Lord? I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for the good influence. And I hope I have a good influence on a lot of other people with all of my heart and all of my soul. And by the grace of God, before, as long as I am in this world, I pray that uh, what happens to some of these uh, preachers, these big name preachers that have happened to them in the last few weeks and months, God help it doesn't happen to me. The Bible says, let that man that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Lord, I don't want that to happen to me, folks. But my own strength, you can't do it. You have to have the grace of God. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you trying to, are you trying to, you know, are you trying to win tonight in your own ability? You know, from experience? Are you trying to make things happen? It doesn't work that way. You need the Lord, folks. And the Holy Ghost has been given to us for that purpose. Let's stand up tonight. I want you to think about it. You need to come tonight. Folks, you heard good preaching tonight. Amen, amen, amen. you this past Wednesday night God does not get in a hurry he doesn't get in a hurry it was five years it was a good five years after I got saved and I got saved in 1973 but it was a good five years after that till I came in contact 
with the teacher. Amen. I've been to two Bible institutes, Bible college, studied Greek and Hebrew and all the rest of that stuff. I've had all of it. But I'm going to tell you something. I've learned a lot from the teacher that God gave me. You better believe I have. Learned a lot. That's the way it works. Let's sing another verse. for Satan to beat us down. It's very easy. And tonight I may say something that might help you. Uh, practically every one of us in this house tonight, I'm sure you can go back to a time in your life when you know without a shadow of a doubt God intervened and he did something. You know it. You witnessed a miracle. You witnessed the supernatural. And this is what liberalism does. It takes the supernatural out. Most liberals are nothing but natural men. They're just natural religious professionals. They don't believe in the supernatural. They don't believe in the virgin birth, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. They don't believe in any of that. They're just natural men. They think with a natural mind, and they cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. But I have seen God work miracles. No doubt in my mind. I have watched Him raise people from the deathbed. I have seen Him heal hearts. I have seen a woman in terrible pain look up at me and say, Preacher, the pain's gone. It's just gone. I have seen these things. Now, here's what I urge you to do tonight. Go back to one of them. Let your mind to go back to that time when you witnessed that and you were part of it. You saw it. And spend some time meditating in there and simplify your life. Cleanse your mind. Renew your mind in the one that you serve tonight because he's able to do above and beyond all that you could ask or think. When I lay my hand on someone in the hospital, I anoint them with oil. I fully expect God to intervene and raise them up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't check in with any Baptist Sanhedrin before I do it. No, sir. I couldn't care less what they think. I go in there and I do it because the Bible says plainly in James 5, 14, call for the elders of the church. I would urge you tonight to renew your mind. He you remember, he went to Romans 12 this morning. Uh, beseech you, brethren, by the, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Come tonight to him and ask him to renew your mind. Ask him to renew it. When, when I first got saved, I would spend hours memorizing scripture, and it came so easily. Hours I would spend memorizing the Word of God. I can't do it anymore, not like I used to. But I thank God I can still read it. <laughs> I can still read. Amen. Why don't you do it tonight? Why don't you do it? Why don't you come tonight and say, Lord, renew my mind. Renew my faith in your Lord Jesus Christ and our Savior. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. brother. We'll pray for her. Amen. Remember that. Okay, brother. Let's remember that. We believe in healing. All right. Sing another verse, brother.
you come. Don't, don't be in a big hurry to leave. This may be your last service. It may be our last one right now. Do something with God. Is He moving your heart? Let's do it tonight. Renew that mind. Won't you come? you come. Spirit prayer in here now. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. The Holy One. Thank you for coming. Oh, blessed one. Thank you for coming. Oh yeah. We've done our part. He does his part now. Amen. Talk to him. Oh, how he wants to talk to you. He's ever in that garden in the cool of the day. He's waiting for you. How long has it been? Once you come, This bishop got up before you tonight and he poured his heart out. He's a pastor of a local assembly, folks. And he poured his soul out preaching the Word of God. He's a bishop. Won't you come? Oh, praise God. Holy One. <laughs> oh. times have I said not one word in that Bible says any angel ever prayed no seraphim, no cherubim none of them but you do because you've been made in the image of God. Amen there's something inside you that is not in any of these creatures Amen He set aside a place for us that draws near to the heart of God Amen Amen If you come to my house sometimes at four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock, I'll be out there on that deck in the dark, alone. No, I take that back. <laughs> I'm not alone. <laughs> I 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Not alone. Oh, man. I'll sit there for an hour, hour and a half, two hours. And you wouldn't, you won't hear a word come from me, but I'm talking. And then he's talking to me. And I wouldn't give that for anything. Oh, Lord, if you take that away from me, just take me from this earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Amen. I asked God to give me something today, and he did. <laughs> That's something about the nature of God. He knows your heart, and he knows if you want something real, and he'll give it to you. Thank you for the word of God. Pray for this brother as he goes back to uh, Pisgah and, uh, because they are in the region for all of this, this, this horrible, horrible catastrophe. A lot of folks up in there, folks have lost their loved ones. They've lost everything they've got in this world. And, but it's a time when God can begin to speak and intervene now, folks. Doors are open. And uh, amen. When they look around and see nothing, they may look up. Amen. amen. And so pray for them. Pray that uh, pray the Almighty will use it. Use it for the glory of God. All right. Well, anybody get saved tonight? Did you get saved tonight, ma'am? God bless you. Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. You're gonna, it's a new creature. When she walks out that door, she'll never be the same again. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, brother, for coming and ministering to us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank God. I'd write a letter to the folks at Pisgah and say, thank you for loaning us your pastor <laughs> for a Sunday. Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, let's have a couple of men go to the back door. We'll take up an offering for this brother. And uh, I'd like to thank the Lord for his Holy Spirit. Amen. And it was so real. Oh, yeah. That's exactly right. Yes. 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 Scripture says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. All right. Got a couple of men at the back door. You might want to thank this evangelist. You say he's a pastor. He's doing evangelist work right now. Do the work of an evangelist. And so thank him for the work he's done tonight and the message he's preached and his wife for her singing, the gifts that God's given her. She's gifted. And thank the good Lord for that. And Lord willing, we'll try to have him back again. How many like to have him back again? Amen. All right. How many like to have him bring his wife when he comes? All right. Amen. <laughs> okay. All right. Brother Hall, will you dismiss us tonight, please? Amen, amen, amen.